Hey guys, welcome back to Doc Holly Talks and the Relationship Series. So today's topic is boundaries. So this is one of my favorite topics. I talk about it with my clients all the time because it's a great framework for understanding interactions and relationships. Um, and I, I know a lot of people talk about boundaries and people have different concepts um, about boundaries, but the way that I talk about it is, um, I think, worth hearing. So the first one, basically there are four different kinds of boundaries that I like to talk about. And the first one is the most basic, most obvious form of boundaries that I think most of us would understand, which is the physical boundaries. So um, we have the concept of our physical bodies. We understand when, you know, our bodies have been um, violated, basically. I mean, if someone touches you without your permission, someone stands too close to you, make you feel uncomfortable. Um, even uh, when people have made comments about our bodies that may or may not have been welcome, that has f maybe felt like a, a violation of a boundary. Uh, we, uh, I know that when I'm working with um, adolescents, I'm often talking with them about their physical boundaries. Um, it's something that uh, kids have to learn how to negotiate first. It's the first kind of boundary to learn how to negotiate for themselves. For example, working with adolescents around sexuality. I mean, I might want to say, especially to the adolescent girls, I might say, you need to know what's okay with you. You need to know what parts of your body are okay for other people to make comments about or to touch or if you're dating like what are you okay with in that realm uh, because if you get into a situation where you haven't thought about it and you don't know what you're okay with and what you aren't okay with it's harder for you to set those boundaries it's harder for you to notice when someone is violating your boundaries say you haven't decided what's okay with you and what isn't and you haven't verbalized that to the person that you're dating and then you wouldn't necessarily know how to say actually that's not okay with me so please stop um, which makes it very confusing. So that's just an example of physical boundaries, something that I think we're all aware of. Um, you know, if someone came up and slapped you in the face, you would know that's a physical uh, boundary violation. Um, so that's the first one to start with. It's the first one to start talking about with our kids, with our teenagers, um, and definitely something you should know what's okay with you and what isn't physically. So the next level of uh, boundaries is what I would call the psychological boundaries. I mean, not just me, other people call them psychological boundaries too, but the concept of psychological boundaries is that I have the right to have my own thoughts, beliefs, and opinions. So I am a person on my own right. I have my own brain. I have my own system of figuring things out. So I'm, I'm allowed I have that right to have that that internal process going on. Um, you know, you also, as another person separate from me, have the right to your own beliefs, opinions, thoughts, and so forth, and your own way of working out things or thinking about things. And I think this is a really difficult one. It can be a really difficult one for people. It's especially sometimes difficult for parents. Uh, you know, we are really teaching our kids, you know, this is the way to think about the world. This is the way to believe. This is what you should, you know, this is how you should do things. And the reality is that our kids are actually going to develop beliefs for themselves and they're going to learn how to think for themselves. And that is eventually what we want. But it can be hard when our kids believe things differently than we do or when they don't have the same values, for example, that we might have or when they're questioning or struggling, you know, that's a really hard thing for us. And so we have to be able to respect that psychological boundary of another person, just like we have the right to have others respect our psychological boundaries. Um, you know, if our, if, if we're, if we believe in God and we have a kid who says, I don't believe in God, you know, we, it, that, that might be really hard, but it's actually really important for us to say to that child, well, you have the right to that belief. I don't agree with it and I maybe hope that you would change your mind about that because you know I would like for my kid to have the same belief that I do but I also want to respect your right as an individual to have your own beliefs and to come to it on your own in your own way if it's forced on them it's not something they're ever really going to be owning actually uh, so that's psychological boundaries 
The next level is what we call emotional boundaries. And this is one that comes up a lot in uh, relationships because emotional boundaries are, you know, defined by the fact that I, as my own individual human being with my own skin, my own brain, my own psyche, I have feelings, my own feelings. They belong to me. They are only known by me and I have the right to them no matter what they are. And the truth is that feelings are not voluntary. Feelings are not something that we create on purpose for ourselves. I mean, we do, you know, we can have a tendency to create certain emotions for ourselves and we might need to have insight into that. So we might shift things that might create those feelings for us. But the reality is that if you have a feeling, it is there for a reason. It has the right to exist and it is really important for you to understand that feeling without having to worry too much about how that feeling may or may not affect another person because it's just a feeling. Feeling is just energy in your body. It is uh, something that has a, you know, a, 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 an energy wave to it, just like any other bodily function. Um, feelings aren't good or bad, right or wrong. They are just something that exists for a reason. There's usually a cause for a feeling. So when someone crosses emotional boundaries, they are saying things to you like, you don't feel that way. You know, a good example is a kid says, oh, you know, I... I, I had such a tough day. I, you know, I feel so sad. I really feel like my friend Johnny is like so mad at me. I don't think we're ever going to be friends again. And, 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 and the parent might in the most helpful way or trying to be helpful, say something like, oh, don't be silly. Don't be sad. You know, I'm sure Johnny and you are going to be friends for a long time. I think you're probably just overreacting. You know, don't, don't be sad. You're not sad. Or if a kid says something like, Oh, you know, mom, I'm really hungry. I'd like, I'd like something to eat. You can't be hungry. There's no way you're hungry. You just ate. You know, I mean, I know I'm guilty of having said that myself to my kids, but um, that's an example of a, an emotional um, boundary violation. Actually, that one's kind of like a physical boundary violation too. Like your body is not yours. You're not allowed to feel the feelings in your body. Um, I'm more of an expert on whether you're hungry or not. Like that's a boundary violation, guys. <laughs> um, but when someone tells you how to feel, tells you, uh, what you should be feeling tells you that your feelings are wrong. Those are all boundary violations. And it's okay for you, you know, even if you can't say back to that person, hey, you can't tell me how to feel, you know, or, you, you know, they're, they're, it, that's going to create conflict or you're going to get punished or whatever. Even if you can't necessarily set that boundary verbally with them yet, we can talk about how to do that. Um, you can at least know within yourself, hey, you know, that's a boundary violation. And I actually do know what I'm feeling. And regardless of what that person says, they're not in my head with me. They're not in my body with me. They don't know how I feel. Um, which is interesting too, because this is where being passive sometimes gets you in trouble because other people aren't in your head with you. They don't know how you feel unless you tell them. You can hint at it, you know, with your body language and the, your tone of voice and things like I talked about before, but they're not really going to know. And guessing is not usually very effective when it comes to emotional um, awareness and interpersonal communication. So if you want someone to know how you feel, you have to actually say it. You have to say, I feel, you know, that's the only way that information leaves your body and actually enters their awareness um, in any effective kind of way. And so, okay, the final type of boundary is what we would call um, energy boundaries or energetic boundaries. So this is, you know, a whole nother level of boundaries that most people are not really consciously aware of. But if you're at all familiar with the concept of like an aura, for example, we, we do all have an energetic bubble around us. Um, it's been proven. You can see, you know, I think PET scans of people's auras, uh, you know, or magnetic resonance imaging of people's auras, like it's a thing, you know. Um, and I can talk about that some more if uh, you guys are interested at all in that. But um, when someone crosses your energetic boundary, it will make you feel bad if you are not prepared for it, if it's not something that you are welcoming. And sometimes many of us, many of the people that I work with um, in therapy, as well as myself um, and my kids, you know, we're, some of us are very sensitive energetically. We may have very 
strong awareness of other people's energy. We may sense it, whether we're sensing it consciously or unconsciously. Most of us, especially young ones, we're not necessarily consciously aware of other people's energy, but we may feel it. So, you know, you may walk into a room and say, oh, gosh, it feels tense in here, or I'm feeling a little off. Um, that is going to be your energetic boundaries interacting with other people's energetic boundaries. Um, and so it is very possible that someone can violate your energy boundaries by being out of control with their own emotion. Uh, if you have someone in your life who has really big emotion, who does not know how to talk about it effectively, who does not know how to hold it, if it's intolerable for them, you, and if you are a sensitive person, you are going to end up being affected in a negative way or in an overwhelming way um, by that other person's energy. And um, I'd love to talk more about that, but I'm definitely making this video a little bit too long. So that is the fourth kind of boundary. I can talk about it some more in the future. Uh, reach out to me, let me know whatever questions or comments you have about boundaries and um, we can definitely elaborate. Thank you for listening today. Uh, share these videos with your family and friends. I hope to have a wider audience at some point so that my message is getting out there helping more people. Anyway, see you next time, guys. Have a great night.